We do find that other divine writings, apart from the Law of Moses, were to be expected. First, there was nothing final about the Law of Moses. There is no hint in the Law, that it was to be the only written revelation from God. Second, the Lord promised to raise up prophets after Moses. It would only be natural to assume that some of the words of the prophets would also be committed to writing. In addition, the Law of Moses was incomplete. There were predictions made of things to come. God's promises needed to be fulfilled and recorded. All of this anticipates further scripture. While it is clear that the five books of Moses were regarded as divine throughout the entire Old Testament period, the situation is less clear for the other books. The Old Testament provides very little in the way of information about the collection of other divinely authoritative books. Following Moses, God raised up the institution of prophecy to continue revealing himself to his people. Moses promised that this would happen. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. For this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb, on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, or we will die. The Lord said to me, What they say is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites, and I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command him. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. While divine revelation did not end with Moses, the process of the acceptance of canonical works after Moses is not quite as obvious. However, there are a number of things that we can learn. Joshua, who was the successor of Moses, continued to receive and write authoritative truth from the Lord. The book of Joshua says, On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people, and there at Shechem he reaffirmed for them decrees and laws. And Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God. Then he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak near the holy place of the Lord. Joshua's writings were placed in the very book of the law that Moses wrote. His work would have been immediately accepted with the same authority as Moses' writings. These sacred writings were kept at the sanctuary at Shechem. This practice, of placing holy records in the sanctuary, was done by many other nations of antiquity. This is another indication that Joshua, like Moses, was regarded as having written holy scripture. We are told that Samuel wrote down the regulations, put them on a scroll, and kept them in the sanctuary. Samuel explained to the people the rights and duties of kingship. He wrote them down on a scroll and deposited it before the Lord. Then Samuel dismissed the people to go to their own homes. Since his writings would have been placed with those of Moses and Joshua, they would have immediately been accepted as holy scripture. The chronicler mentions that the annals of Hehu were written in the book of 1 Kings. The other events of Jehoshaphat's reign, from beginning to end, are written in the annals of Jehu, son of Hanani, which are recorded in the book of the kings of Israel. The book of 1 Kings says that Hehu was a prophet. Moreover, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Jehu, son of Hanani, to Bashan his house, because of all the evil he had done in the eyes of the Lord, arousing his anger by the things he did, becoming like the house of Jeroboam, and also because he destroyed it. Therefore, at least part of the book of Kings. First and second Kings was written by someone who had the prophetic gift. Isaiah the prophet was told by the Lord to write words on a scroll. The Lord said to me, Take a large scroll and write on it with an ordinary pen, Maher Shalal Hashbaz. These words were to be preserved as a memorial for the future. Go now, write it on a tablet for them, inscribe it on a scroll, that for the days to come it may be an everlasting witness. We also find the Lord telling the prophet Ezekiel to write certain things down. And if they are ashamed of all they have done, make known to them the design of the temple, its arrangement, its exits and entrances, its whole design and all its regulations and laws. 
Write these down before them so that they may be faithful to its design and follow all its regulations. God told Jeremiah, the prophet, to write down words in a book. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Write in a book all the words I have spoken to you. The end of the Old Testament came at the time of the prophets Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. Malachi wrote approximately 400 BC. The last books of history were Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. The events that were contained in the book of Esther were written basically in the same time period as Malachi. Their writings would have completed the Old Testament canon. Apart from the five books of Moses, mainly the authors themselves acknowledge the divine inspiration of their own works. There are, however, a few references of one prophet acknowledging another prophet or one writer acknowledging other books. In one example, Isaiah wrote of the book of the Lord. Look in the scroll of the Lord and read. None of these will be missing. Not one will lack her mate. For it is his mouth that has given the order, and his spirit will gather them together. The contents of this book are not identified. Daniel spoke of the books. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures, according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem would last seventy years. This is the earliest reference we have to a collection of sacred books. However, nothing is said as to what books were in the collection or how many there were. The chronicler notes the writings of the prophet Isaiah. The other events of Uzziah's reign, from beginning to end, are recorded by the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos. The book of Psalms was not all composed at once or by one person. We can read about the end of the Psalms of David. This concludes the prayers of David, son of Jesse. Therefore the Psalms of David make up only a part of the book of Psalms. The Bible says that the Proverbs of Solomon were collected and copied by the men of Ezekiah. These are more Proverbs of Solomon compiled by the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah. This is another indication of the process of the composition in the Old Testament books. Those who came later quoted the earlier prophets as authoritative. In the book of Jeremiah it says, Some of the elders of the land stepped forward and said to the entire assembly of people, Micah of Marasheth prophesied in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah. He told all the people of Judah, This is what the Lord Almighty says. Now Uriah son of Shemaiah from kiriath Jerim, was another man who prophesied in the name of the Lord. He prophesied the same things against this city and this land as Jeremiah did. We have a number of references in Zechariah to the former prophets. Do not be like your ancestors to whom the earlier prophets proclaimed. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Turn from your evil ways and your evil practices. But they would not listen or pay attention to me, declares the Lord. Where are your ancestors now? And the prophets, do they live forever? But did not my words and my decrees which I commanded my servants the prophets overtake your ancestors? Then they repented and said, The Lord Almighty has done to us what our ways and practices deserve, just as he determined to do. Zechariah also wrote, are these not the words the Lord proclaimed through the earlier prophets when Jerusalem and its surrounding towns were at rest and prosperous, and the Negev and the western foothills were settled? He then said, They made their hearts as hard as flint, and would not listen to the law or to the words that the Lord Almighty had sent by His Spirit through the earlier prophets. So the Lord Almighty was very angry. The books after Moses were written by a number of different people during a 1,000-year period. Most likely, they were individually recognized as being canonical. When the recognition that the prophetic gift had been removed from the nation, about 400 BC, these writings were then put into clearly defined divisions. One of the most likely solutions with respect to the collection of the Old Testament canon has to do with Ezra and the men of the Great Synagogue. In the Talmud, an ancient collection of Jewish traditions, 
There is a consistent theme of Ezra and the men of the great synagogue were the ones who collected the sacred writings. In these traditions, Ezra is given a position second only to Moses. For example we read, Haggai, Zechariah and Malachi received it. The tradition of Moses from the prophets. The men of the great synagogue received it from Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. There is also what is known as the Ezra legend. It says that for 40 days, under divine inspiration, Ezra dictated the five scribes the 24 books of the Old Testament as well as 70 other books that were not to be made public at that time. In 40 days they wrote 204 books. And it came to pass, when the 40 days were filled, that the highest spake, saying, The first that thou hast written. Publish openly, that the worthy and unworthy may read it. But keep the seventy last, that thou mayest deliver them only to such as be wise among the people. For in them is the spring of understanding, the fountain of wisdom, and the stream of knowledge. And I did so. The twenty-four books that Second Esdras mentions are the Hebrew scriptures. While all the details of this account cannot be taken seriously, there is some reason as to why this tradition exists. Therefore it seems fair to conclude that Ezra was responsible for collecting the sacred writings. In the 2nd century BC, the Syrian ruler Antiochus IV destroyed many copies of the scriptures. He declared that, those who possessed a copy would be punished by death. We read in 1st Maccabees. When they found the law scrolls, they tore them to pieces and burned them. If anyone was caught in possession of a copy of the covenant scroll, or if anyone kept to the law, that person was condemned to death by royal decree. After defeating Antiochus IV, Judas Maccabeus during the 2nd century BC collected the sacred books. The same things are reported in the records and in the memoirs of Nehemiah, and also that he founded a library, and collected the books about the kings and prophets, and the writings of David, and letters of kings about votive offerings. In the same way Judas also collected all the books that had been lost on account of the war that had come upon us, and they are in our possession. The fact that he collected the sacred books shows that there were a number of books that were considered holy. We are told specifically about the memoirs of Nehemiah, books about the kings and prophets, the writings of David, and the letters of kings. First century writer Flavius Josephus tells us, that the sacred writings were kept in the temple in Jerusalem, before its destruction in AD 70. This is consistent with the recorded episode of Ilka discovering the Book of the Law in the temple during the reign of King Josiah 630 BC. When all the evidence is considered we have a consistent testimony to the existence of sacred writings from the time of Moses until the time that the second temple was destroyed in the year AD 70.